Today I want to talk to you about head of household. Because uh, as men, we get kind of confused about head of household. And so I want to encourage you through the word of God, what this really means, the head of household. And first scripture I want to bring up, and I just put this in here, is 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. The thing about this is that it tells you the natural order that God has set up for his people. But I want you to know and realize that Christ is the head of every man. The head of a woman is her husband. All right, man, you got to be husband before you can get the head part. You know, don't be just boyfriend is a different he ain't the head yet. He got to be a um, husband. All right. And I need you to understand it because in the King James Version, it doesn't say that. It just says that the head of a woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. But uh, it's actually trying to tell us that the head of the woman is the husband, not the man. OK, uh, man is not to to run around thinking that God has given him this rulership this control over women okay it, it is the there is a reason that God has made a man to to control or to rule over the household okay and so we need to find out exactly what that reason is this headship is a God-given role to only God fearing men okay it is not for the natural man the role of headship was given because God needed someone to be held accountable. OK, he's given us this role so that we can be held accountable. And if accountable, then uh, we, are, we have to be capable of being reprimanded or reprimanded. There it is. That's the reason. There's no other. Oh, uh, but I thought we were head because we're stronger than the women. No, that just means you, he made you that way, your muscles that way, so you can get out there and work hard. There are weak men and there are strong men. Okay? But they both are men. A weak man tends to fight for his manhood. All right? Only because he's weak at it. A strong man knows that his manhood can never be taken. No matter what you do to me, I'm always going to be a man. All right. So let's go on. Let's look at, at, at something right here. The beginning of headship. Let's try to find out where this thing started. The beginning of, uh, of headship, the Bible's reference. Genesis 3.16. In Genesis 3.16, it says, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall what rule over thee that is the beginning that's where it started although it was a curse but God has delivered us from the curse through the blood of Christ now men can rule over women or men can rule over their wife or husbands can rule over their wives with uh, God's instructions and power. Let's compare the difference between men's headship and Christ's headship. Headship is based upon trust, y'all. That's where it's, it's, it's got to be based upon trust. Ephesians 5, 23, it says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Even as, even as, even as, like unto, in the same manner. All right? In the same way as Christ is the head of the church. All right? Ephesians 1, And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things. This is uh, God has given to Christ all things to the church. 
Your wife must know you have her best interests at heart and that your motives are holy like Christ's motives are. Men must prove to be Christ-like. Yeah. Jesus is our role model. The wife will listen to the man if he proves to be Christ-like. Men must not have a tyrant attitude. Any person who ex exercises authority in an oppressive manner is considered a cruel master. A tyrant thinks he knows it all. And in, in the Bible, and I'm going to just read this last one, Galatians 6, 3, it says, For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Now, who would to say that the man is nothing when he thinks he's something? I think I'm something. Who to say I'm nothing? Well, the Bible said, when he is nothing. So when is he not nothing? Who to say? Well, let's put it this way. You are only something in Jesus Christ, not of your own accord. So that's what God means when he said, if a man thinks he's something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. For it is only through Christ Jesus that we are, eat, are something, amen. That you should say, I am somebody. Yeah. Well, of course you are. Did somebody tell you you wasn't? <laughs> you know, yes, I've been oppressed. And I was I, I've been told that according to the law, I'm half a man. So I'm running around hollering, I am somebody. I ain't got to holler, I am somebody. I know what I am. I am somebody through Jesus Christ. I am everything through him. I am a good man, strong man, a man of valor. I am not afraid. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Amen. I'm covered by grace. I'm covered by grace. I'm covered by grace.